Howdy guys, Laurie Moon here, and this is my speed review video on all of the games I've played on the PlayStation 4 in 2017. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the games came out in 2017, it just means that I played them in 2017, so some of them might be a little bit dated, but anyway, here is my reviews, let's get started. The last guardian. <laughs> Apparently not many people liked this game, because you could never get Trico, aka the giant bird dog, to do what they wanted. But that was totally the point. He's a giant foreign creature with no concept of what you mean when you point at something. And I definitely felt like as the game progressed, he became more sharper and faster to respond to commands. I absolutely binged this game and completed it in just over a week. Technically, this game is a puzzle game with trying to figure out how to open doors or how to escape a situation, but it was so gorgeous and immersive that it felt more like an action adventure. The curiosity to what will happen next keeps you playing, and that's why this one's getting a thumbs up from me. That's right, I'm, I'm reviewing games with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Easy as that. Yakuza Zero. I had never played a Yakuza game and knew very little about it. All I knew is that the game hopped from brooding and serious to absolute Japanese-centric insanity at the drop of a hat, and that hooked me instantly. This game serves as a prequel to the main series, hence its name, Zero, and I absolutely loved it. The main story is a little basic and gets a little boring towards the end where it's trying to raise the tension with plot twists, but in my opinion just keeps dragging out for a little bit too long. But that's not what this game's selling point is for me. It's the sheer number of little mini games and side quests it has to offer, and such ridiculous things too, like breaking up a cult, saving a Michael Jackson knockoff from zombies, and going on dates with girls and guys, whether you choose to or not. What more can I say? Thumbs up! Next! Brothers, A Tale of Two Boys. I don't understand the praise for this game. Really high scores and a flat out 10 out of 10 on Steam? I played this game right through to the end and felt so many of the characters you encounter and little side errands to open doors were silly. Yes, it's a game driven by speechless characters, meaning they only make noises and speak in a made up language, but nothing really intense happens, and I don't feel rewarded for going through the adventure at the end of it. If anyone can convince me otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts, or better yet, someone who actually agrees with me, because I feel like I'm the minority here. Final Fantasy Type Zero. The story is just all over the place in this game. I scarcely remember the details in the middle chunk, just the beginning and the end. Granted, this is an old Japanese exclusive PSP game translated into English and HD remastered for the PS4, so I can imagine it's not supposed to be the best thing ever. With all that said though, the battle mechanics are surprisingly fun and addictive despite repetitiveness. Every character handles differently and different weapons and abilities. And I'm strongly reminded of the fighting in Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core with the limited equipped abilities and navigating a mini menu to choose attacks, as well as the Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days where there's a huge array of characters to play as within Organization 13. although sadly in that game only in arcade missions is this possible. For the bulk of the actual game you're restricted to Roxas. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, yes, I give this game a thumbs up. However, this one is totally a guilty pleasure on my part, and I'm not sure that everyone will feel the same way that I do, and I wouldn't actively recommend people to play it. Abzu. <laughs> what is that? How do you say it? I, Obzu? Abzu? Yeah? I mean, I got this game for free with PlayStation Plus for a month, and it was okay, I guess. Very atmospheric and really pretty in different parts of the ocean, but for a contextless, linear, arty kind of game, it wasn't that rememberable for me. Unlike Journey on the PS3, which I'd highly recommend to anyone. Yeah, I don't know. I don't- I didn't hate it. I didn't really like it that much. I mean, can I give this one a pass? A pass? Like, not a thumbs up, not a- like a pass, middle ground? Maybe leading on to more of the thumbs down side? Can I give it a 4 out of 10? Can I just give it a score out of 10? I, I, I guess I just did. Hmm. Uh, okay. Next! Neo. 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 <laughs> Neo, get, the Matrix get spin Get straight up red pill. Fuck this game. Too hard. Couldn't beat the first, or was it the second, major boss? The one, the big guy, the big fat guy in the boat. I couldn't even, I couldn't touch him. I really don't like the Dark Souls games, and this game is very similar to that series. It's masochistically hard. It's like you get pleasure out of losing so much until you can finally win out of skill. It's not like Final Fantasy or something where you can level up or train or grind a little bit and then come back and beat the boss. Nothing makes this easier in this game. 
except learning the patterns of the enemies and actually playing super well, which, ah, fuck, I guess is more rewarding, but I don't have the patience or drive for that. This game is just too hard. I don't like it. Add an easy mode, please. Fuck, I, I wish I, I didn't suck at this game. It seems kind of cool. Okay, personally, I just like this game. Thumbs down, but if you're a fan of Dark Souls, maybe try it out. It's pretty much an Englishman goes to the feudal orient, which is kind of a cool setup for a game, I think. Crash Bandicoot. Insane trilogy. Oh, it's like insane. Yeah. Oh, I got it. So, yeah, it's just the original three PS1 games, but now with crisp graphics. They even handle exactly the same, which with the smooth graphics is kind of confusing. Like, you expect Crash to be able to jump higher or fall slower. With good graphics, the physics become difficult to comprehend, in my opinion. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the original games were just as hard as this, but I don't remember because it was so long ago. Anywho, I'm giving this one another pass. I'd recommend it to someone who's never played the Crash Bandicoot series or is passionate about the originals. But me, I'm kind of on the fence here. Near or tomato. <laughs> you put an R Tomato, in tomato. <laughs> Before you ask after hearing my opinion, yes, I played this game the whole way through, and yes, I didn't like it. I was a little confused about the story and its progression. Once I got enough chips early in the game and fully equipped myself, combat became pretty easy for the rest of the game. And having to play through all the same events, but now as A2 and the other guy, what's, is A2 the boy? I can't remember. It, it kind of sucked, you know, having to do it all over again. I played this game through to the end thinking there'd be some shocking twist or revelation, but it was kind of bleh, you know? I totally wasted about 30 hours with this one. Also, hey, I disliked it so much that when I beat the game, I did the secret credits thing at the end where you donate your save file to the void, but also delete it so your name appears to help out other players who play the game in this ending online. I disliked this game so much that I decided then and there that I will never play this game again and deleted my file through this method. That was probably the best feeling I had playing this game. Lol. Persona 5. For me, the gameplay and battle mechanics of the Persona games increases as the series progresses, but the story and plot decreases. Here's a chart of them that I made. And yes, I have only played 3, 4, and 5 of the Persona games. The menus in Persona 5, though, are freaking cool. That's probably the, a weird thing to comment on, menus in a game. But this game has totally done it right. They're so dynamic. I feel like I'm in an undercover operation, and just equipping the skills and weapons is exciting. The main dungeons are all linear and have switches and things. The party stop and comment on stuff along the way, which is to be expected. But when compared to previous games where every floor is a randomly generated mishmash, this is the first game to have a linear flow with very dynamically changed rooms. I wasn't that shocked by the outcome of the story, unlike in previous games. It was almost exactly what I predicted would happen. And I'd already invested... Ugh, how long was my total playtime? Maybe 70? 90 hours somewhere? Ah oh, well, I can't criticize something if I went back and played it as much as that. So it's definitely a thumbs up from me. Looking at it retrospectively though, I'm a little hesitant, but while playing it, I had a blast. Dragon Quest Builders. I was expecting to get bored of this one quite quickly, but I had an absolute whale of a time. I didn't complete it, but I got up to the final world, if that makes sense to anyone who has played. It is very slightly a Minecraft ripoff. There's different gear to create, lots of materials, but the best part about it is its story. Not in terms of plot really, but in terms of giving you a goal. For example, you need to build this type of building. Or, you need to build X number of houses in your town. Or, you need to explore this new area and get the specific item or material. It's very much like the PlayStation classic Dark Cloud and Dark Chronicle, in this sense. This game is very good and kept me hooked for hours. One Piece, burning bodies. <laughs> yep. One Piece Burning Blood? This game was dumb. As much as I like the One Piece manga, this game was pretty stupid. The story mode focused primarily playing just one or two of the characters throughout it, and it was solely within the Marineford arc of the original series. Even the gameplay and fighting mechanics of this game introduced nothing original. It was subpar to some of the Naruto fighting games that there have been in the past. And when compared to the previous One Piece game series, Pirate Warriors, which covers the entire One Piece story, albeit a little bit hasty, this game has next to nothing to offer. 
Characters aren't unlocked by completing special requirements, you can just buy them straight off the bat. Hell, it took me like a day or two of not even solid playing to complete the story modes, and by that point I had no drive to do the side missions, which didn't offer any cool rewards for completing them. Thumbs down! Thumbs down, do not buy! Do not even try out this game, it's just not worth it. Tales of Berserkers. I get, yep. Yeah. Tales of Berserkers. Okay. That you know, I've tried really hard to be a fan of the Tales game series. The first one I played was Tales of Vesperia on Xbox 360, and that was an absolute iconic game. Memorable characters, a wholesome plot progression, and a lot of secondary characters that pop up again and again from time to time. Games I've played since then, like Tales of Zillia and Graces, have dropped the world map system. You just walk around from place to place, and the stories are a little lackluster, and a lot of the stuff you do almost feels like filler episodes in an anime. Mind you, Tales of Zillia's integration of putting battles on the actual field instead of taking you to a separate generic zone was kind of cool. They've done this in Tales of Zestaria and now Tales of Berseria since then. Anywho, what I'm building up to is this game hasn't blown me away in terms of its story, its world or anything like that. It's a good game, but not an exciting new adventure. Can I also just say that I don't like any of the characters? Let me just briefly compare it to a thumbs up, 10 out of 10, thumbs to the ceiling game, Tales of Vesperia. You've got Yuri as the main character. He's kind of a cool guy, but it's sarcastic, and he has a good heart. Carol is this little annoying kid, but he does make you laugh, and you do end up feeling sorry for him and wanting him to improve as you learn what his background is and his aspirations. Raven's a funny old man, but he might be a spy for another guild, so there's this whole is his persona an act thing? Play the game and find out. These two aren't actually playable in the English version of the game. Anyway, Rita's a feisty little hothead. Rapide is the coolest made-up anime-centric animal I've ever seen. Judith is pretty much Nika Robin from One Piece. Lastly, Estelise is a castle-bound princess who really wants to experience the wider world and go on an adventure. The player feels kind of like her, I suppose. However, you side with Yuri, who just tags along because he's the kind of cool vagabond guy. I love him. Yuri, I love you. You're my kind of guy. Why am I painting such a, a bright picture of Tales of Vesperia and not Tales of Berseria? Well, I'm about to blow you away, because fuck Berseria, what have we got, guys? Revenge-obsessed serious woman, sarcastic but show-off-y samurai, stern-faced and blunt pirate captain. Oh, now you like us, do you? Stop asking me so many questions. Shut the fuck up! Why won't you talk like a regular person? I don't like any of you! Why would I play a game where I don't like you guys, huh? The game's not bad, okay? The game's not bad. Thumbs up. I like it. I'm, ju I'm just disappointed. Final Fantasy X HD Remaster. Um, it's... it's almost exact... It is exactly the same as the original, but the graphics are better, so... I don't really have anything new to say about this particular game, but yeah, Final Fantasy X or X is a pretty solid title. No world map, very linear progress, and a simplified battle system where you always know that Waka should fight the flying enemies, Tidus should fight the fast ones, Auron should fight the armored ones, etc. This game goes from an absolute breeze to impossibly hard at the very last second, as soon as you reach the final dungeon, and that's just whack. But I do like this game, pretty decent characters. Yeah, nice. Also, this version, the HD remaster of the game, includes Final Fantasy X2 as well. However, I've never actually played that one. I hear it has multiple classes to swap between with the same characters. That sounds kind of cool. Maybe I should try it out. Would you recommend it? Yakuza Ki- oh, Jesus. Yakuza Kiwami, not to be confused with Yakuza 0, is an HD remake from scratch of the original Yakuza on PlayStation 2, which means it's the direct sequel to Yakuza 0, which is the prequel to the series, so yes, this game is technically Yakuza 1. Personally, it's not as good as Yakuza 0. It feels like there's a lot less minigames, and the fact that you can only play as one character, where in Yakuza 0 you play as two, is an obvious indication of how much less content there is. Still, this one is presumably more important to the story of future Yakuza games, whereas Yakuza 0 is, although canon, not as important. After playing a crap ton of Yakuza 0 and being bored by the minigames, I was wishing there was more and something a little bit different that I could play for the story missions, with equally good graphics and on the PS4. And I was over the moon to find out this game exists, because I've actually never played any of the other Yakuza games. 
So a remake of the original, the first one that started it all, was excellent. Thumbs up from me. Final Fence. Final Fantasy XD. Or <laughs> I'm gonna have to liken my review of Final Fantasy XV to that of Persona 5. I played the entire game the whole way through despite it being super long and boring at times, so I must have really enjoyed it. But looking at it retrospectively, it was kinda long-winded and stupid. Unlike previous Final Fantasy games where it's crucial to level your characters evenly, get the right skills so you have magic, physical attacks, healing, and all sorts of necessary things, this game was borderline hack and slash, with battles that weren't particularly challenging. In fact, this Final Fantasy probably had the easiest final boss battle of all the Final Fantasy games I've ever played, and that's pretty much all of them. I literally did it in one attempt. No retries. I have too much to say about the particulars of this game, so I'm literally just gonna gloss over them right now. The open world exploration? Loved it. The side quests and bounty battles? Hated it. The main characters? Didn't like their individual personalities so much, but loved their genuine chit chat and banter between themselves. The story, what the fuck am I doing again? I literally recalled zero of the key plots, literally. I played this game maybe half a year ago now and I remember nothing whatsoever. I think Noctis is trying to get summons to get back to the capital city or something. Ugh, damn it, it irritates me that I remember nothing. Well, whatever. This game was super addicting and really fun while I was playing it. I must have beaten the main story incredibly quickly. I, I liked it. I did like it. Wipeout Omega Collection. So I hear this game is actually just an HD remake or remaster of some of the previous Wipeout games with very little or even no new content added to the game. But I got this one super cheap, 30 New Zealand dollars, and I have had a blast playing it. One of the more simpler and faster racing games that I've ever played. There's no story or nothing, just win the races, try not to die, get fast times or beat the competition. Good old fashioned racing game. A delight. Samurai Warriors Spirit of Swada. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, um, I'm gonna do a review of this game. I, I literally played it one time and only did about four or five of the key story missions. It was a very different take on the Dynasty and Samurai Warriors games where you play as set characters and prove a hometown and hunt resources, which I thought was quite cool. But ultimately the story glossed over me entirely and I had no idea why I was doing these over the top battles. Maybe the game not having an English dub played a huge part in this? Cause some of the setups before the battles and cutscenes are very wordy. I mean, take a look at this clip for example. Zhang Jiao, the leader of a religious sect known as the Way of Peace. Hear this manly voice narrator? He's in all the previous Dynasty Warriors games. When you have one of these map of the country explanation things with no commentary, you lose focus very quickly on what's going on. They actually didn't do this in the most recent Dynasty Warriors game, Dynasty Warriors 8, but with the more episodic structure of that game, it didn't make it too confusing. For this sole reason, I'm giving this game a thumbs down. I'm not gonna try playing this one again, sorry. Maybe I'll just replay Dynasty Warriors 8 or something instead. Or better yet, wait for Dynasty Warriors 9 to come out. Open world? Look at this shit! Man, I hope it's good and this world's not gonna be massively empty or anything. Kingdom Hearts, dreamed up dice master. <laughs> Slower? What? <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Okay, yeah, go. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you just said the last bit. Kingdom Hearts. Dream Drop dr Dice Masters. <laughs> do, you th do you think do you think that's the real name of the game? Dream Drop Dice Masters. <laughs> dice Masters! Yes! Yes! <laughs> I played this as a part of the Kingdom Hearts 2.8 HD pack, which includes a teaser for Kingdom Hearts 3 with its assumed features and graphics when it's released. I thought this was alright, good to see how it will play, but the story of it was kinda unnecessary. Anywho, Dream Drop Distance. Never played this when it came out. 
on account of not owning a 3DS. Yeah, it was alright. It was very much like 358 over two days in that sense, that the story was subpar most of the time to the main series, and it was all about the game and navigating the worlds. I thought some of the worlds were a bit barren, and helping the characters of some of the worlds served nothing to the plot, and didn't really teach Sora or Riku lessons or anything, and change themselves as characters. It just seemed like more of an obligation to the series that they had to visit these worlds to continue. It's quite possible that I'm outgrowing Kingdom Hearts as a series, but I also feel the series is just too long. There's too many games on separate consoles, all trying too hard to weave together this massive story. Here's my view on the Kingdom Hearts series. Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2. Play nothing else, that's the end of it. No prequels, no adding in confusing characters to tie together a bigger narrative. This is why I love the Final Fantasy series so much, because they're all very similar, but set in completely different worlds. Yes, I played through Dream Drop Distance all the way to the end, and it was yet another, hmm, okay, that's the end of the game, but it was still good fun leveling up, learning the new moves and stuff. Hey! Also, the skill trees with your equipped pets was actually a pretty good system. They should have something like this in Kingdom Hearts 3, I think. Thumbs up for the whole experience for me, despite some of the nasty things I said. And that's it! That's all of my reviews of all the games that I've played on PS4 this year. I did play a couple of games on PC as well, and on the PS3, but a majority of them were on the PS4, which is why I made this review video. If you're still watching now, then that means you've sat through the entire review, so thank you so much for watching all of them. And hey, if you have any reviews on some of the games that I've played, like maybe differing thoughts or similar things, let me know in the comments. Let me know about anything. Let me know about what games you've been playing and stuff. I'm just generally interested in any of the comments, and I do read all of my comments. I'm not a massively huge YouTuber, I'm just one ordinary guy with a couple of subscribers who actually watch my videos, so, you know, shed a single tear. But thank you so much for watching this video. I, I, I love you more than I love Yuri from Tales of Vesperia if you've sat through the whole video. Um, Lauren, what was your favourite game of 2017 on the PS4? Uh, is it allowed to be not on the PlayStation? <laughs> no, all the games on the PS4. Sims 4 on the PC. <laughs> Cats and Dogs expansion. It was really good again. Another year strong from <laughs> EA. <laughs> they've, got a really, they've got a really committed team. And I just think it's a really good game. <laughs>